What's up, y'all? Advance here. So, the time has finally come. The day that we all knew was probably going to be here, but thought would never come. Tom Brady, the GOAT, has officially announced his retirement. Now, I told y'all last year, I don't subscribe to clickbait articles, but he said it himself. This came from his own mouth. He said, I'm retiring for good. I'd write out a paragraph, but I did I, I did that last year and I'm not doing it again. So, <laughs> so oh my God. But um, yeah, man, though, Tom, 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 thank you so much. Thank you for the Super Bowl. Thank you for the back-to-back -back conference. No, not conference title. Sorry. Back-to-back -back division titles. Thank you. You know, thank you for making us competitive again. You know, we was always competitive, but we needed that extra, that extra little, um, little push to get over that hill. And you gave it to us. Thank you. That's why, I like, even when, uh, you know, when we was having a down year and I knew that, all right, I knew what the, what the issue was. You know, I was saying, and when everybody was trying to get all up in your business, I was like, no, 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 let that man figure that shit out. Let that man figure his shit out. And yeah, so yeah, man, thank you. Thank you for, you know, helping us build. You know, we, I, I think right now we're, uh, kind of screwed as far as cap space is concerned <laughs> but oh man but no no all jokes aside man like the the things that Brady has done for the Buccaneers organization you know despite ownership is tremendous you know so yeah I didn't uh, the only thing that I didn't like was how that whole Bruce Arian situation worked out. You know, because everybody knows. <laughs> Sorry, man. I got I got I gotta call it like I see it. Like everybody knows it. But no, nah, but um it's all jokes aside. Like like no, nah, like it's yeah, it's it's like for the last 14 years since I've started watching football again because it was a it was a long period where I wasn't watching football and you know I came back in and of all teams that I picked up you know was the Bucks you know from from Gruden's last year after the the after the, the floor fell out from under us and we had to go through a lot of crap we went through a really bad year a really good year then a, another disappointing year, and then we've had coach after coach after coach. They were they would hire a bad coach, fire said coach, hire a good coach, fire that coach, hire a bad coach, and yeah, and it's like our team never had any consistency, you know. But when Tom Brady came to the Buccaneers, you know, it was uh yeah, it was a change in culture, <clears throat> you know, so. Yeah, thank you, man. You did that. <clears throat> you know, once you uh, we had that that hybrid of the uh, of the Aryan slash Patriot offense. You know, you brought in you brought in all of the uh, you brought in all of the Mercs. <laughs> you know, the people that wanted to come that that wanted to come to Tampa Bay just to have the uh, the opportunity of playing with Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette. I love Leonard Fournette, man. Like, was, like I had Leonard Fournette on my fantasy team in his rookie season. <laughs> so, and I remember thinking, like, man, I wish the Buccaneers had him. And lo and behold, you made that happen, bro. Like, <laughs> oh man, Shady McCoy turned him into a back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion. <laughs> oh, 
who else was it? Oh yeah, of course Gronk. Brought us Antonio Brown, even though I don't really think that we needed him. But you know, just for the sake of star power, you know, he um yeah, Tom Brady alone added so much to the Bucks. You know, in terms of star power, uh, the uh, offense, because uh, like we always had a good defense, um, but Tom Brady is what made that offense really click. And you know, I understand the whole situation with Jameis, and you know, everybody was like, "Nah, man, Jameis is a shit quarterback." And yeah, he threw a lot of interceptions, had a lot of turnovers, but. You know, like he had, uh, yeah, he had the potential to do it because his stats was up there. But this isn't a Jameis Winston video. This is a Tom Brady video. But you know, not taking nothing against, uh, not taking nothing away from from Jameis. But Tom was that he was the, he was that guy. You know, so he was that guy that got us over the hump. And you know, now I'm very interested to see what the future holds. So we're still in a division that's where it looks like everybody is rebuilding, you know. So now it's going to be a bit of a um, it's going to be a bit of a cold war and an arms race to see like who can get back to the top of that hill again. Of course, I'm calling for my team again, <laughs> but yeah, like we got to see what um, like who who's going to be our quarterback. Are we getting a veteran? All signs look to be pointing to Derek Carr, or is it going to be? Is it? Are we going to like finally like activate Kyle Trask and see what he can do? Are we going to groom? Uh, are we going to let uh, let <laughs> let Ryan Griffin uh, do his thing because he's still on the roster? I didn't. I forgot. I thought they would have let him go, but uh, I like Griffin. But I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. But the fact of the matter is that now Tom can go from being the greatest quarterback ever to being the highest paid sports broadcaster ever, <laughs> you know, because he still had that pending deal with Fox. Remember, I told, I, I said that in, in, in a previous video of mine. But yeah, so look, whatever the future holds for Tom, uh, yeah, he. He's he's gonna be he's gonna be all right. He's Tom fucking Brady, <laughs> man, bro. Like they're gonna be talking about they're gonna be talking about you in football for another twenty years. So, speaking of the future, now they're already talking about who's gonna be the like who's gonna be the next goat. Now, of course, you can't not replace Tom Brady. But just like how Tom Brady couldn't not replace anybody that came before him. But, you know, they, they also mentioned, you know, the gap between first and second place is tremendous. You know, because a lot of these guys that are still playing barely have one Super Bowl, let alone seven. You know, so... Yeah, we're gonna see what uh we're gonna see what comes of this. But I would say, well, it's it's clear now that Aaron Rodgers is actually the last of the old guard, you know, in turn in the NFL. As far as as far as it comes for like starting quarterbacks. But you know, we we gonna um we're gonna see what happens because I think he might be he might be gone next year too. Because they talking about he's not even coming back to, to Green Bay. But then again, I've heard that old that old tale before. Um, you know, him and and Holland, maybe I maybe I'll retire, maybe I won't. Should I stay? Should I go? I don't know. <laughs> you know, but when I think of the next Tom Brady, not necessarily in play style, but I mean in terms of like status and like volume as a quarterback, I would say my the first name that comes off the top of my head is Patrick Mahomes. So yeah. <laughs> like in the in the years that in, in, in the, the 
What's it? How long has he been in the league? league? Five years? In the five or six years that he's been in the league, you know, he like his third year, he took off. So, next, I would ha- I would probably say, you know what? I'm not going to put this in order. I just know that Patrick Mahomes is at the top of the list. But in terms of, like, young quarterbacks, now I'm just going to start throwing some names out there. Not in any particular order. Um... Uh, I would say Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is on that is on that track to become a, um, to being an elite quarterback because he alone adds value to his team, and you can see that from his first his first year in the league when he got injured. How the how the the um, how the productivity of that team just dropped, you know. So. Yeah, so that so there's that. Uh, who else did I say? They, um, Mac Jones. I, we haven't really seen a lot of what Mac Jones could do this year because of you know the uh, Patriots play calling from the offensive coordinator. <laughs> but apparently they like to favor a lot of screens, <laughs> you know. So so that's that's another good one. Uh, who else? Um, Zach Wilson, not really, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like this, you know, Zach Wilson's good, but we we haven't really seen how good he is. Uh, Mike White, you know, I love Mike White. <laughs> like, oh man, Mike White is good. Um, I don't know what the, I don't know what Washington is going to do with Taylor Heineke. Are they going to bring in somebody else, uh, another over the hill quarterback, to try to, you know, to try to, um, to start over him, or no? Uh, Geno Smith is rising back up the ranks. You saw him, like he brought his team to the playoffs. <clears throat> There's still Deshaun Watson. You know, Deshaun Watson is a uh, he'll he'll actually have a full year with the um, with the Browns next year, if that's where he lands. <clears throat> you yeah, know, so. Yeah, so we got a lot of people. Um, I don't know where Derek Carr is going to end up. If Derek Carr ends up with the Buccaneers, he might have a chance to really, like, thrust himself, you know, rise above that slightly above average status that I've given him. And that's not because he's a Buccaneer, but I'm just saying because of the the weapons that, um, that he has. And it's, like, more than just a group of guys and Devontae Adams. Now, if we get Devontae Adams, man, that would be a beast. Season's over at that point. <laughs> oh, oh, hold up, hold up. How could I forget? Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. No, my, my bad. Yeah, Jalen Hurts. Is, if, if Patrick Mahomes is the number one, Jalen Hurts is clearly the number two because of the drastic improvement that he made from last year to this year. And he didn't even really have to change much, you know? So, but... Just, just how the, um, just from how that, how that, that, you know, that that team, uh, how that team really came together on, in the off season, and really all it took was AJ Brown, <laughs> you know. But the fact of the matter is, is that Jalen Hurts accounts for eighty to ninety percent of the Eagles' offense. So, or or were those stats from last year? I don't know. I can't remember. But yeah, like fact of the matter is that yeah Patrick Mahomes number one Jalen Hurts number two very close race <clears throat> because those, and, and, and you know it makes sense because those were the two front runners for the MVP race I still think Jalen Hurts should get it but Patrick Mahomes has a strong claim too because he lost his most valued asset and he still made it you know he still made it to the Super Bowl so that is a Brady-esque feat. So, so, yeah. But in any case, that's it. Those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Post your comments down below. Let me know who do you think is going to be the next GOAT and why. Show your work, please. <laughs> my name's Advance. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe on everything. Tom Brady, hell of a career. Thank you for everything. I'm out.